Hello everyone. Welcome to The Gift of Giving. My name is Stephen Murray and I'm the host of the show and I thank you for joining us this week. For those of you tuning in for the very first time, this program focuses on foundations, nonprofits, and 501c3s. These are the individuals who are in the trenches day in, day out, making life better and brighter for the citizens here in Nevada. And today's guest is no exception. Mm -hmm. I'd like to welcome to the program Melissa Cipriano. She's the executive director of the Children's Heart Foundation. And welcome to the program. Melissa, thank you so much for taking the time and being with Absolutely. us today. Absolutely. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to share our mission. Oh, it's a pleasure. You are doing the Lord's work here. There's no question about that. So would you like to give us a little brief o uh, overview of the organization, when it was founded, and what you accomplished? Sure. The Children's Heart Foundation in Nevada was founded in about 2000. Talks were okay. probably in 1999, but this, that was before my time with the organization. And together with two local uh, cardiologists and some families that had a child born with a congenital heart uh, defect, they joined together because they knew that more families would follow in their footsteps. And they kind of knew the plight of what they went through, what other families are going through when they have a medically fragile child. And being able to uh, create a nonprofit to help those families while they go through their medical crisis was so important to them. And so that's how the Children's Heart Foundation was founded. Yeah. And um, the rest is history. You know, for over 20 years now, we've been helping yes. families who have children in our entire state that are born with a congenital heart defect. Wow. Now, what made you join the organization? There's, there's lots of great organizations here in the state of Nevada. What made you uh, sign up with Children's Heart Foundation and become the executive director? That's quite an undertaking. It is. It's a lot of work, but mm -hmm. it's my passion work. Um, I've yes. always had um, a great deal of compassion um, for children in need, especially those that, with medical conditions. I've been in the nonprofit world for over 15 years now, um, all surrounding um, the mission of uh, children. Mm -hmm. And uh, prior to coming to the Children's Heart Foundation, I was with a local nonprofit that helped families who had children with cancer. So um, seeing those families go through what they have to go through when their child's in the hospital facing surgeries, uh, the unknown yes. is um, pretty frightful Frightful's. for families, yes. um, both Scary. from a uh, financial standpoint Point, but also an emotional standpoint. And if we can make their journey just a little bit easier, stress-free, um, when it comes to certain programs that we offer, I know we're doing our job, my staff is doing our job, my board of directors, um, you know, they, they are so supportive of all of the ideas that I bring to the table yeah. of new ways that we can help families and also sure. carry on those traditions from the founders of how they wanted to uh, make sure the Hart families in Nevada are being taken care of. Yeah. It's great that you're coming up with new ideas too because the, the times are constantly changing and everything. So it's good that, you, good that you're coming up with new ideas, new concepts, new programs. And we're going to talk about some of your programs later on the in this program. Um, but I did see on your website, it says that the congenital heart defects are the most common type of birth defect. And there's more than 40,000 births per year. That's a very frightening statistic, very frightening. It is. That's that's a nationwide um, statistic. One out of every 100 babies born in the United States is born with some form of a congenital heart defect, or we like to call it disease because our kids aren't defective. And, no. um, you know, there's 40 different types. And um, it's scary when you're expecting to have this perfect, healthy baby, boy or girl, and you're facing a traumatic um sometimes long sustaining type of lifelong condition that your child's going to have is pretty frightening so it is but and the statistics are horrible but i also saw there's been a 30 percent decline in numbers in the last mm -hmm. decade so that's kind of encouraging that there's a decrease so something's got to be happening 
right somewhere along the line from the medical standpoint absolutely the geniuses that the cardiologists that treat these children are amazing here in nevada there is only one pediatric cardiology group it's children's heart center they have a location in reno and then of course here in las vegas there's two offices and then sunrise children's hospital is the one and only pediatric cardiology unit in the state so we help families across the state of nevada if their child has to come to Las Vegas because of a pending surgery. Uh, prenatally, moms, um, you know, will know if their child, in, in many cases, uh, will be born with a congenital heart defect. Those moms are brought here to Las Vegas to uh, deliver their baby. So the protocol is that the baby is cared for immediately after birth. So mm-hmm. it. Um, it's pretty fascinating to learn all of these things over my five years being with the organization, but supporting our medical team is um, so important to our mission. Uh, we are very close with the Children's Heart Center and they refer all the families. So if you have a child in Nevada with a heart condition, your child will be a patient of the Children's Heart Center. Mm-hmm. And uh, they do a phenomenal job. Um, their protocols and their prenatal protocol that they do with the, the expecting mothers is just top notch. And uh, there's, I think, 17 cardiologists now in that group. So oh, nice. Yes. So nice. they're they're well taken care of. Um, they're a great group of uh, doctors, uh, nurses, and people that take very good care of our littlest heart warriors. That's it. That's very nice and heartwarming, no play on words intended. It's very heartwarming to hear that we've got this team of excellent staff here that are helping these kids, you know, with heart issues. Absolutely. They, they work tirelessly at their, at their craft. <laughs> yes. Well, and they, they've got to be dedicated and, and caring, they compassionate. Are. They have Absolutely. to be, of course, it's part of the job. Now, you have a program called Camp Mender Heart. So would you like to explain a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, I, like I said, I mentioned earlier, I've been in, um, you know, the nonprofit world for more than Mm -hmm. 15 years. And with both organizations, we had medically supervised camps and Camp Menda Heart is, I like to call our crown jewel or it's my favorite program (laughs) because Uh we, um, we really take, uh, efforts in making sure a child that has a heart condition has and experiences a childhood tradition that so many healthy children get to experience. But because of their health condition, they may not qualify for those camps because they may not have the tools and the medical staff on board to make sure that they're okay. And Mm -hmm. so uh, about, gosh, how many years are we going on now? About 15 years ago, the foundation started Camp Menda Heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, it's for ages seven to 17 years of age, medically supervised, which means we have a cardiologist that comes to camp with us and we have a team of nurses that come to the camp. And nice. so we make sure their medical needs are being met, whether it's their medications, whether if they're on oxygen, if they have mobility issues, we've got golf carts to get them from point A to point B around camp. And, you know, we like to let the campers choose what activities they you know, he or she would like to do. So if they don't feel like going horseback riding, they don't have to, we're not Mm -hmm. forcing them to, but we're giving them that opportunity to experience a summertime activity that I think all children deserve. Camp is a way that they foster their own independence. Mm -hmm. They create memories that will last them a lifetime. And they create a lot of, um, and make a lot of friendships that have carried them through their heart journey as, um, you know, a child through, you know, almost young adulthood, they age out at 17, but when they turn 19, they can join our, what we call our CIT program, our counselor in training. So we're training future counselors of heart patients that can give the gift of of being a mentor to other heart patients. How cool is that? And whereabouts does this camp take place? Sure. We um, have found a location in Southern California. It's Mm -hmm. called Pathfinder Ranch. It's in, um, Mountain Center, Riverside County oh, sure. area on your way to so Palm it's Desert. Not too far. It's mm-hmm. not too far. It's about a five hour drive. So mm-hmm. we charter buses and we take the children down there and it's a week long camp. So this year nice. it's June uh, 10th through the 15th. And we have 67 campers signed up to attend. I was going to ask you how many people yeah. sign up. Now, Jude, 
do you put a limit on the number or as long as people sign up you will you will make it happen for them some way or we, other we do our best to make it happen we budget for about 70 campers so we mm -hmm. are almost there and uh -huh. we um got we have some campers that are coming down from reno mm -hmm. as well so we offer it to all children in the state of nevada um and the buses leave las vegas on the 10th and we will be back on the 15th of <laughs> june nice nice so. and what when they camp, do they actually have tents and things like that? It it's was... um, it's a camp facility that we rent, and there's gotcha. cabins. There's okay, buildings cabins, so. that um, are like dormitory style. Mm -hmm. There's uh, t uh, bunk beds in each one of the cabins, and so their counselors are in there with them. So each cabin is assigned um, three counselors to about eight to 10 campers. And then we also have our CITs coming this year. We've got uh, two boys and two girls CITs that were past campers that have graduated up into becoming um, a volunteer force. So we're really, really excited for them to experience, you know, transitioning from a camper to a, a, a staff member of camp. Mm -hmm. And um, we tease them all the time. We're like, now you get all the secrets of camp, like all the really good snacks in the volunteer lounge and the coffee <laughs> in the volunteer lounge. We tease them all the time. They're like, that's why my counselor kept going <laughs> to go get caffeinated. It sounds like a fantastic program. It really it does. There's and horseback I... riding, canoeing, zip lining, uh, rock wall, um, hiking, uh, arts and crafts, basketball, swimming. We've got so many activities that there's more activities than there is time. So yes. um, they, from sun up to sun down, sundown, they are busy. <laughs> I'll, I'll bet. We keep and them busy. They probably go to bed exhausted. I would they suspect. They do, so. especially the littles, the <laughs> like seven to ten year olds. They are they're out by nine o'clock. <laughs> okay, and let's now let's talk a little bit about you have an adopt a heart family program as well. Would you like to talk a little bit sure. about that? During the holidays, um, it can be stressful for anybody, you know, mm -hmm. if they're on a limited budget, but when you throw in a medical um, condition with a family member, you know, finances are the, the number one thing that is hit. And so it's very stressful, especially if a child has had a surgery, has been in the hospital for weeks, mom or dad has to take time off of work. It affects the family's budget. So we started um, several years ago, um, the foundation started the adopt a heart family during the holidays. And that was to give a little bit of, of stress relief to families mm -hmm. during the holidays so they could still provide gifts for their families where they couldn't afford it because many of their funds are being sure. redirected to yes. medical bills or, you know, try to keep up with the mortgage because they had to take time off of work. Yes. So a lot of things fall into play for these families um, financially. And it's just a way that the foundation can help them and create those holiday memories for the family. So we do that by we've uh, have some donors that during Thanksgiving, they provide turkey, the sides, all the, you know, the sides that go with the Thanksgiving meal. And so for those families that need a little bit of help during Thanksgiving, um, that have had a medical crisis within the calendar year, uh, we are able to provide that for them for Thanksgiving. And then for the holiday season, the adopter family comes into play where our donors select one of our heart families and they provide um, Christmas for the families in the form wow. of gifts. So it's That's... pretty, it's pretty incredible. Our Las Vegas community is so generous and they provide a lot for our families during the holidays. You'd be amazed at the amount of times we hear that on this program about how generous the people here in uh, Las Vegas oh, and the community is. We're going to talk about some of your other programs mm -hmm. when we come back. We're just going to take a very brief sponsorship break. And, uh, uh, for your viewers out there, I hope you'll stay tuned. Uh, tune in to Lucia Capital Group. They help people with 401k programs and uh, small businesses with 401k programs. Please listen to their message. I'll be right back. I started my career in financial services during the Great Recession, one of the worst markets we've ever been through. That challenging period was full of uncertainty, but every challenging period has its opportunities. Investing should never be like gambling. Your financial future is far more important. No one knows what the future holds, but here at Lucia Capital Group, our bucket strategy can help you prepare for whatever lies ahead. I'm Joshua Dowd. I've been working with clients for more than 16 years, and I can help you as well. 
My office is right here in the heart of Summerlin, just north of Charleston Boulevard. Don't let the stock market determine the quality of your retirement. Call me today for a free consultation at 702-508-6421. That's 702-508-6421. Country roads take me home to the place where I belong, West Virginia, Mountain Mama. It's a triple yellow. Introducing Pacific Coast Capital, your partner in finance. We provide financing for your business. Speed, flexibility, and creativity are the foundation of our service. We'll help you navigate through change and opportunities. Our 90 plus years of experience ensures quick turnaround on loan decisions. Ride the wave to prosperity with us. Ready for new funding? Visit our website today at pacificcoastcap.com. Welcome back, everybody. And uh, I'd also like to thank Pacific Coast Capital for their support on this program and also the Firelight Barn Dinner Theatre. Thank all my sponsors. This program would not be possible without them. And I'd like to welcome back Melissa Cipriano from the Children's Heart Foundation here in Southern Nevada. And uh, let's talk a little bit. Uh, we've talked on a couple of your programs, and there's another one. Maggie's Garden. Uh, would you like to give us a little bit of information about Maggie's Garden? Sure. Maggie's Garden started by one of our families who actually sits on our board today. Uh, they had a little girl by the name of Marguerite, and she had a heart condition. And she went in for surgery and had many complications, and unfortunately, she didn't make it. Uh -huh. And so the family was introduced to the foundation during that time, and they made such an impression on their family that they wanted to create something in memorial of, of little Maggie. And so that's when Maggie's Garden was created. And it's, imagine a big toy closet mm -hmm. um, with the best toys that a child can imagine. Um, the VTEC toys, the you know superhero toys, the Barbies, dolls, etc. cetera. Um, Maggie's Garden was created in her memory, but as a way to help soften and to make going to the doctor not so very scary for littles. And gotcha. so when a child, it's their birthday, whether it's their birthday and they're at the uh, doctor's or they're in the hospital, an upcoming surgery, if we're able to visit them at the hospital after surgery, we come with gifts and Maggie's garden. They can, when nice. they come to the doctor's appointment, they can come to Maggie's garden and they can self select whatever they like. Nice. And I've been known to let them take one or two. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I can't say no to kids. It's just, I just can't. No, that's so. nothing wrong with that. And so um, Maggie's garden is what a, a nice way. program too. Mm -hmm. You've got some very nice programs going there. And, um, also, you give all kinds of assistance in, in other ways, too. So let's talk about some of the other uh, programs that you have, for want of a better word. Uh, you give prescri prescription assistance and financial assistance. Would you like to talk a little bit about um, Sure. Our outreach program, um, those, two, those two items fall underneath that, and so does our travel as well. Uh, so when a family is in financial need because of their a situation that they're in, they have to take time off of work. We will help with utility assistance, rent or mortgage assistance during um, during their medical crisis. And that is when a child is going in for surgery or they've been in the hospital for long periods of time. And it, we've had some patients that have been in there for many, many weeks to months on end. And so it does make a huge, huge impact on the financial of course. stability of these sure. families mm -hmm. so that is why you know our founders many years ago started our outreach program so we can help in the times of need for those families and so the prescription assistance if there is a medication that is either not covered or if the family can't afford their copayment etc will help with that or any medical type of devices so there's some families that may need um 
a device in the home that insurance doesn't cover. Mm -hmm. And so we'll help provide that. Uh, we've had, gosh, we've had some babies that have been able to be discharged, but they have to be discharged with um, home care. And a normal crib cannot sustain all of the medical equipment that needs to be attached no, to the course. crib. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to get a medical crib for the family. So those are just a couple of examples that the foundation has provided. An AED machine for families to have the you know, defibrillators at their home, that's not covered by insurance. So th those are just a couple of examples that we have provided in our, um, in our medical assistance. Now, when people, uh, when you provide this, do these families reach out to you or is it the doctors and nurses say, hey, you know, I think these people need some help. Do you then reach out mm -hmm. to them? How does it, how do, how do you connect? The referrals come from a variety of sources and some families self-refer them Selves. They they find they do their research and they find mm -hmm. out about our foundation. But the majority is coming from the Children's Heart Center and from the social workers at Sunrise, gotcha. or the nurses. So mm -hmm. you know they they get an intimate view of what these families are truly going through because they're caring for their their heart child and you know they can especially the social workers they can really tune in onto you know what yeah. the families need and what we provide yeah. and how that can help. Well, that that's their jobs. That's what they're trained yep. in in digging out that information, finding out. And now you also have uh, food from the heart. Now, is that part of your Thanksgiving dinners that you were talking about? Was that something totally separate? No, that is a program that we provide at Sunrise Children's Hospital, the CICU unit, uh, where most of the heart patients are. Food from the heart is, uh, we stock the pantry and the fridge in the parent lounge. So we every week we are stocking with healthy snacks and drinks and quit grab and goes because it's one at Sun Sunrise Children's Hospital. Once you're parked, you don't want to have to leave. Traffic is bad. <laughs> it's hard to get in and out mm -hmm. and they don't want to leave their child's side. So we mm -hmm. are trying to make that more convenient for the families. So we provide healthy snacks and uh, drinks and uh, special creamers for the coffees and things like that in the parent lounge. And then we also provide food vouchers for um, the cafeteria at the hospital so they oh. don't have to leave to get a hot meal sure. they could go downstairs take a quick reprieve mm -hmm. and get something to eat and so that's been very helpful for a lot of our families um because it's hard once you're there you just don't want to leave yes. your child's side but they still have to nourish themselves yes and so we we pay for that with the hospital now do organizations donate to this food program or are you having to buy it wholesale or retail somewhere it's a combination of both combination. so we yeah we've done some food drives before with uh certain civic groups church groups and youth groups uh that have provided you know prepackaged uh snacks for our families mm -hmm. but uh we also have um written this program into many of our grants so our grantees are providing um the financial backing for us to be able to go and purchase good purchase I was going to ask you about that, uh, and we'll get to the donation part and the funding later. Um, one thing that you've got a brand new program, and I'm assuming that this is one of your thoughts or ideas, the teen group. Teens are so unique and so special, and I just adore them. And the bond that they create at Camp Mender Heart, I wanted to create a, an area, and this also came out of COVID. Um, one, I remember one of my moms calling and saying, I can't keep my child at home on a shelf. She needs socialization and she needs to be in a safe space doing so. And so out of that and, um, you know, our camp program, I'm, I wanted to start a teen hangout. We don't want to call it a support group because they won't attend if it, they, you tell them it's a support <laughs> group. Teens don't like that word or that statement. But uh, we started it uh, two years ago, and it's been um, a very fun way. There's very informal. We either take them to the movies, bowling, um, skating we've done. We've done an escape room, which that was their ultimate favorite. They loved it. And I think next up on the list, they asked if we could go to laser tag. And I said, well, let me clear that with some of the cardiologists first. <laughs> So uh, it's a lot of fun for them. They create a lot of friendships and they don't have to explain away their heart condition because all the kids that are 
part of the teen group, ages 13 to 17, they are all there because they have a heart condition. So their conversations may not be the same as a typical healthy teenager, but nonetheless, they're, you know, they're coming together and they're enjoying one another's company and they're learning from one another and they're creating those bonds. So that's, that's it's an amazing program too. It, um, Again, you're coming up with all these new things as you're learning and seeing the need. You're plugging up that hole and filling that need, and that's amazing. And also on your website, it says you give out some scholarships as well. We do. It's so, our Smart Heart Scholarship, and uh -huh. we actually just awarded two young men in our community uh, $3,000 scholarships each, and they're both heart patients. They... Uh, we start the process in November. Typically, November 1st is when our application process opens. And then deadline is February 1st. And we have an independent panel of judges that we submit all of the applicants to. There's requirements that they have to meet, you know, with their, whether it be, um, they have to write an essay, they have to submit their transcripts, they have to give us their letter of acceptance to either their college univer or university or even trade school. So if an applicant wants to apply and they want to go to um, any type of trade school, they're eligible to for a scholarship for that. So um, we kind of cover the basis and yes. we just uh, awarded two of them. We're taking them out to lunch next week and uh, cool. they'll get their, their funding. So for fall 2024, they're gonna have an extra $3,000 they can put towards their tuition. That's so. great. Now, how do, the, do they reach out to you and say, can I apply to you for a scholarship or are they made aware of the, the program? We reach, how do they we know do a about reach it? out. So, we're so you able do a reach to, out. Mm -hmm, okay. We're able to uh, do a query for the families that we serve as well as for the patients mm -hmm. of CHC for the age groups that they're el the eligibility of the age groups. And then we send out notices and then it's on our website. And we also post information within the clinics as well. Gotcha. So, yeah. Boy, you've got an amazing, <laughs> amazing network here of all kinds of things going on there. And so now how do you get your funding? You mentioned grants. So presumably you get some government grants, do you get some corporate grants as well? Most of our grants are corporate and, yeah. and local business uh, grants. We just That's received, great. which I thought was pretty exciting, being that we were the host, um, our city was the host of the, the big game. Yes. And uh, the host committee uh, to give back to the community, they offered a grant program. So we were awarded one of the um, big, I, I don't know if I could say it on the air, but the big game grant yes, no, that's okay. <laughs> that, that came uh, to our valley back in February. So that was pretty exciting for us. But we do. We've got a lot of uh, corporate and business support, private foundations, mm -hmm. things of that nature uh, that helps fund us. And then we've got two major fundraisers per year, which is our Walk with the Heart of a Child. We had on April 20th of this year, and that was a huge success. Over $90,000 was raised. That's and we had great. over 900 people in attendance so great. it was a busy day for the foundation yeah. super exciting so we didn't get you on the program before that to raise some more awareness for it uh is this an annual event it is. That you have? It, we do it every spring okay. uh we are looking at dates for again in april april has been proven to be a really busy event month for nonprofits. Mm -hmm. so we're looking at we hope to keep it in april but Easter is also next April, so we've got to figure out the date to see which works. So we'll we, make it happen. Yes, absolutely. I feel I have a feeling you're going to make it happen <laughs> somehow. Now, what about your other fundraiser? Our other fundraiser is held every September, and it's called Hearts for Charity. So mm -hmm. it's at the Four Seasons, and it's a daytime, um, middle of the week luncheon. And we honor our philanthropist of the year. And then we have silent auction, live auction. And it's just a lovely day. Uh, Four Seasons does a phenomenal job for us with uh, high tea. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. And yes. um, our attendees just have a great time. That's that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. You, you, you're running it as an amazing organization. is absolutely Thank sterling. You. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to be with us today, Melissa. And thank you for all you do for the Children's Heart Foundation and their families. Um, they're doing amazing work oh, there. Oh, well, thank and you.
Thanks you so much. We're for a small being but here. mighty staff. There's three of us. <laughs> There's just the three of you. Yes. And oh we have a goodness. board of directors. That's amazing. They yes. they put in a lot of time as well. But I've got two staff members and myself and we do quite a bit, but we are all all of us are very passionate about what we do. It's, it sounds like mm -hmm. it. And to our viewers out there, if you know of anybody who can benefit from the services from uh, Melissa's uh, Children's Heart Foundation, or would like to volunteer or donate some money or some goodies for their their food bank at the hospital there, uh, please share this interview with everyone you know uh, that might be able to help out. And I'd also like to thank uh, our producer, John Stiles, and station owner, WWDB-TV, for allowing me to host this program, uh, which is an absolute pleasure. Uh, this show would not be possible without its sponsors either. Pacific Coast Capital, Lucia Financial Group, and the Firelight Barn Dinner Theatre. I thank you all for your support. And to Mr. RJ Champion, whose message will come up at the end of this program. And last but not certainly by no means least, thank you, the viewer, for tuning in. I appreciate your support and for listening to what this amazing organization does. If you have any questions or comments, please reach out to me at stephen at thegiftofgiving.vegas. I'd love to hear from you. And I hope you'll join us again next week. In the meantime, be safe, be kind to one another, and see you next week. Stay safe. Bye for now. Mr. R.J. Champion is proud to sponsor WWDB-TV's series, The Gift of Giving, and wishes the program much success. Congratulations and gratitude to the featured guests and the organizations they represent. Our community is well served by your tireless efforts to make Nevada a better state for all its residents.